right here. This is where it happened. This spot marks where Kim and Carol lived their final, terrible, tragic moments. Kim Beverly and Carol Weatherton came to Utah in September of 2003 for a week-long vacation. On a cloudy Monday, the mother and daughter pulled into the Crystal Lake Trailhead parking lot, then set out on a short day hike in the Uinta Mountains. They were not reported missing until they failed to arrive home in Georgia on their scheduled flight at the end of the week. They remained missing for nine long months. They were found here in June of 2004 by the Summit County Sheriff's Office and rescue dog trainers who were working in the Middle Fork of the Weber Basin. They were just two short miles as the crow flies from the trailhead and only a few hundred feet from a trail, but hidden in the trees. Because of this, deputies figured Kim and Carol had become disoriented while returning from Long Lake, turning off the well-traveled Lakes Country Trail onto the faint footpath that crosses over the saddle between Long Mountain and Mount Watson. They assumed the women were confounded by bad weather, by as much as eight inches of unexpected snow. But that's not what happened. Weather station records show the conditions were not so severe. They encountered cold rain and a chill breeze, conditions not all too uncommon for autumn in the Uintas. When Kim and Carol were found, so was a small film camera that they had carried with them. The photos on that roll, published online by KSL in 2006, prove they took a different path. They had not gone west to Long Lake, but instead north to Wall Lake on the Notch Mountain Trail. From there, they headed toward that prominent feature known as the Notch, but before reaching it, they diverted to the west, rounding the Twin Lakes to arrive at Clyde Lake. Critical moment for Kim and Carol. This was the place where they turned right to go over into the Weber River drainage instead of going left around this lake back toward the Crystal Lake Trailhead. The unmistakable north face of Mount Watson dominated their view at Clyde. They could have followed the shoreline and made a loop back to the trailhead, but for a reason we'll never know. They instead turned to the right, passed by the three divide lakes, then descended toward the middle fork of the Weber River. It's really important to understand that in this area you have different drainages. So this lake and the next two on the three divide flow down into the Provo. When you get on the other side of Three Divide, flows down into the Weber. If they were following water downhill, it would have led them toward Hidden Lake. A maze of similar looking meadows and exposed glacier carved rock interspersed by sparse pines greeted them on the far side of Three Divide. Various little streams meander here, cascading, pooling, then cascading again. Though invisible from the divide, Kim and Carol did manage to find their way through that wilderness of off-trail travel to the outlet of Hidden Lake. Now, a decision was made here. They did not continue west as they had been traveling into the middle fork of the Weber River Gorge. That might have indicated they were following water downhill. Instead, they turned south, left the outlet stream, and jumped a little ways before finding another stream following that and then continuing almost directly south toward Long Mountain. The final shots from Kim and Carol's camera were taken next to that second stream in a small meadow filled with golden grass. The last exposure looked across the meadow, revealing a solid deck of clouds hovering above those distant peaks. That final photo is a real clue as it shows the direction that Kim and Carol were traveling as they left Hidden Lake. This is important because it tells us what they were thinking as they headed away. The southern skies were high, the clouds were not down low, visibility was good, and it seemed like the rain had stopped. From this point, one can only speculate. Kim and Carol might have made a mistake at Three Divide, then decided to try and shortcut their way back to the trailhead by picking up that faint trail in the middle fork of the Weaver Gorge. That was just about a mile away from where they stood off the end of Hidden Lake. It wouldn't have been an unreasonable plan either, I know, because I've hiked that route forward and backward. But Kim and Carol didn't make it back to a trail. Something forced them to stop. For an unknown reason, something we'll never figure out, they took shelter in that small, shallow hollow of a cracked boulder. It's my belief that it was one of three factors. Fatigue, injury, or darkness. It could have been a combination of any one of those, actually. But for whatever reason, this was the point where they decided to make shelter, and this is ultimately where they lost their lives. Medical examiners were unable to determine an official cause of death. They suspect hypothermia and it's believed that they passed away on that very first night.